Hiya, good morning. Good morning to my Peter CVD as well. Good morning, Benjamin. How are you? I'm okay. Start of a new week. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're in a new month. What does October mean for you? My birthday. Oh. Yeah. Um, would you like to tell us on which day? Uh, next week, Monday, on the 10th. Okay. Yeah. Wait. Then you are October's own. Yeah. You know why? 10-10. Mm -hmm. Of course. 10th day of the 10th month. Mm -hmm. Happy birthday in advance. Thank you. God richly bless you. You're one fabulous person, yeah? Oh, thank you. So, of course, October is, is the month of plenty in some, I mean, September, October. Uh, and it, it's, it's very significant, 10, in terms of its numerical meaning spiritually. <sighs> it's a wonderful birthday, right? A wonderful month in which to be born. So it's anyway. also our producer's anniversary. Wedding anniversary, 1010. I, I was going to pay him no mind. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, he, he, was, he was trying to do in Shushenim, but uh, yes, it's his anniversary yeah. <laughs> as well. Derek Ekosan, one fantastic person, but you may be the angel here. All I know. We'll go take them soon. We'll anyway, welcome paper. aboard the news review segment. My pizza, we have quite a number of papers we're about to get into, mm -hmm. but. Um, before we do, just a quick look at some of what to expect on the show today. Just to reiterate, of course, we'll be joined shortly by Executive Director uh, for the Media Foundation for West Africa, Suleiman Abraima. We'll be talking about the ECG and the prepaid meters mm -hmm. saga, mm -hmm. which has been resolved, I mean, from today, but we'll see how that pans out. We'll also be contemplating, like I said, I'll be going to Kanishi where in fact I'm going to be interacting with some people. Now, yesterday, something rather curious happened in a clear, a blatant case of offensive conduct mm -hmm. by a police officer okay, who actually discharged a firearm. I'll be getting into that as I go um, out and about. And then we'll be talking about the unprecedented traffic on the Tema to Pram Pram or vice versa stretch. I used to use that stretch mm -hmm. uh, to work and it, 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 it was terrible. Uh, Michael Papani Ashali will be joining us from there. And then we'll bring you details of our latest hotline documentary, D Destruction for Gold. Erastus Cesare Donko, my colleague, has been on that beat and we're talking about Galamse and more. So look forward to these on the show. But let's get into the papers now uh, and say a very good morning to Suleimana. Good morning, Mr. Braima. Good morning, Ben. Mapito Sibidi is here as well. We'll be uh, interacting with you. Hope you're well, sir. Yes, I'm doing well. I trust you're well, too. By God's grace. Thank you. Great. It's the start of a new week. All right, so we'll be getting into the papers now. I have the Ghanaian Times Daily Guide, the Daily Statesman. Mapito? I have the Daily Graphic, the Finder, and the Publisher. All right, so let me get into the Ghanaian Times for starters and um police nab 16 over galam safe shootings that story is on page three of the ghanaian times newspaper then there is gra digital vat invoicing takes off today set to eliminate abuse increase revenue mm -hmm. that story is on page 16 then there's heavy rains destroy property disrupt outdoor events at weekend nationwide event grounds deserted during the rains and um <clears throat> i know that for a fact because i was at uh two events over the weekend one of which i was mc for and trust me it delayed the program by quite a bit mm -hmm. of course some people would not show up but uh, that event turned out to be rather you know beautiful a rather successful one there's also echo as au condemned coup d'etat in burkina Faso. Mm -hmm. It appears it's um, coup after coup. Uh, anyway, so let's get into that, that major story on page three. At least 16 people are in the grips of the Eastern Regional Police Command for their alleged involvement in a shooting incident at Asamantafo in the Eastern Region. You may have seen some videos. Now, the police in a statement issued on Friday said the incident occurred between some persons alleged uh, to be illegal minors and a community anti galamse task force in the area on September the 29th, 2022. Signed by the Public Relations Officer of the Eastern Regional Police Command, Superintendent Ebenezer Tete. The statement said the police had retrieved one pump action gun, two excavators, two water pumps and a battery. Efforts, according to the police statement, were underway to arrest the remaining suspects and retrieve any other weapons 
in their possession. The statement added that the police had also seen a viral video on the incident, which was being reviewed as part of the investigations. It assured the public, I'll end here, that all other perpetrators would be arrested and brought to face justice. Your take, uh, Suleimana, on... So you could weave that into the fact that we've had that meeting of five regional ministers, uh, I believe Eastern, Western, Ahafo, I think Ahafo North, what, and, and Ashanti. Five of them, I, I, I may have got one or two wrong, meeting with the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources on this issue of Galamsi. And then again, Otunfo say to the second, the Asantehene, recently uh, re-echoing re that stance, so to speak, that chiefs are not to blame, parrying the blame from the chiefs when it comes to Galamse and saying that institutions should work and all of that. I find that curious, though, because some months back, he seemed to suggest, speaking with Nananum around him, mm -hmm. that they knew of goings-on when it came to Galamse. I don't know, so many dynamics. What's your take, uh, Suleiman? Well, um... <coughs> It's a, it's a very, very worrying development. Um, uh, when the president mentioned some time ago that he was willing to put his presidency on the line mm. uh, in the fight against Galante, um, I don't know exactly what he meant, but my expectation would have been that if this was how things was going to be, or were going to be, then perhaps the president would acknowledge that I have failed in that endeavor, and therefore putting my presidency on the line would mean that I cease being the president. When sometimes I hear people talk about the fight against Galamse, and that we are continuing the fight against Galamse, I ask myself, if this is the result of a fight, then what would have been the situation if we were not fighting it at all? Mm. So the issue of Galamse uh, has, I mean, certainly gotten out of hand. And it's really a sad development. I can understand the two force perspective. I think the point that he's trying to make is that even if chiefs are involved, chiefs are not above the law. We all operate with the same constitution. And in terms of natural resources, they are held in trust on behalf of the people by the president. And so if we have a situation where we say, oh, the local chiefs are involved, and therefore, that is why it's gotten out of hand. Are we then saying that if there is, you know, an escalation of armed robbery situation in our country or other, other forms of crime and chiefs are involved, then we say, oh, because chiefs are involved, there's nothing that we can do. Or as, as leadership, what we do is to blame the chiefs because they are involved in armed robbery or they are involved in stealing or they are involved in destroying our cocoa uh, plantations and all of that. So Otufo is basically saying, look, the laws must work. And he asked, where, where is leadership from national to regional to district? There's a reason why we have a president. There's a reason why we have regional ministers. And there are reasons why we have district chief executives. So if all these people are there and they are supposed to hold the natural resources in trust on behalf of the people and the natural resources are being destroyed, you know, land, water bodies, our forest reserves, are being destroyed. And all we do is to point accusing fingers at, at chiefs and, you know, at, at party people without ensuring that the laws are working. Then suddenly we are not doing our work. I read last, uh, over the weekend that the lands minister had instructed that the Forestry Commission should, you know, uh, ban a certain company from operating in the forest reserves. Then the, the question that I asked was... Are, are you referring oh, to Akunta Mining? Yes, Akunta Mining, and, uh, right. and I'm told it's owned by the Asante Regional Chairman of the MPP. Mm. I, I'm wondering whether it is just realized that it is now that this thing is happening. It's been happening all this while. And they know, this thing, as I said some time ago, constituency chairmen, constituency organizers, regional chairmen, regional organizers, sometimes even district chief executives are involved. And they know, and these chief executives are still at post. The president invited these ministers. Is it that the ministers didn't know that these things are happening within their jurisdiction? Is it that the president over the, over the period, the last maybe two years or so, didn't know that these things are happening in the jurisdiction of these ministers? If what they have to do is, uh, 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 if what they have to do includes protecting 
the natural resources that they are supposed to be holding in trust of the people, and they have failed <clears throat> and have gotten us to this situation. Why hasn't the president fired anybody? I, I can't understand. I, are you Why suggesting, uh, Suleiman, just a quick one, are you suggesting that uh, then maybe a blind eye has been turned to the menace because party people themselves are involved? Is that what you're suggesting? No, I think that from all levels, <clears throat> the, it, it, what we are seeing is just gimmicks, you know, and, and public defeat of a seeming fight against Galamse. I don't think that if we were to have a leader or leadership that is truly and honestly committed to the fight, the fight <coughs> against Galamse, we would be witnessing what we are witnessing. Where our river water bodies have turned, <laughs> you know, the color, you see it and you wonder what is happening. And our leaders travel across the country. They see it. So if this is the result of a fight, then I really don't know if, if we were not fighting um, Galante. I think that is all about gimmicks. Party people are in it. At some point, we were told party here, Sika. The party needs money. You know, party leaders are involved. And across the districts, they will tell you, look, if you are not connected to the party, there's no way you'll be allowed into, you know, any, any place to do whether, sometimes even legitimate mining will be difficult for you. So I, I really think that, you know, the president may not be serious about the fight against Galamsey. Because why? Aisha Wan has happened. You know, river, rivers are turning brown. Um, forest reserves are being destroyed. And no single person has been fired. No single person, you know, has been fired by the president. So Aisha Wan, is it the case that nobody could be held responsible for what happened? That the person has been repatriated? Then suddenly we realize that the person is in town for, for months and nobody is responsible, not the immigration, not the, 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 the people manning our borders. I mean, you can't understand. So how do we take the, the president serious on this fight? I don't think that there is that serious commitment towards the fight. It's all, all, all we are seeing is just gimmicks and, and public deceit to say that we are fighting, we are fighting. And I clearly understand uh, the position of Otufo, that if you say you're fighting, fight it and let's see. If a chief has committed, arrest the chief. If a chief has committed, prosecute the chief. I don't think that a chief is allowed to destroy our water bodies or our, our natural resources because they are a chief. So, um, unfortunately, that's where we are. Maybe if going forward we will see some positive action, um, we can only pray for that. Interesting. So right, right now, you seem to be very pessimistic about the fight against Galamsey. Is, is it one that you feel we could win at any point in time? Well, very we can win if that. the president really uh, becomes realistic with whatever he says about the fight against Galamsey. Because if you have put people in charge, and this is what is happening, and you wouldn't even sack one person to serve as an example or to serve as a deterrent to others, then how serious will we take you? Regional ministers are there. District chief executives are there. Where all these mining is taking place, you have people there. You have people who are representing you. And the future of this country is being destroyed. And we are looking on and just making promises, talking big. And every day we are fighting Galamse. Our water bodies are going. Our forest reserves are going. People are cutting. The other day I saw a, a video on, on, on one of the social media platforms where, where somebody was saying, look, it is my cocoa and I'm cutting it. Yes, and I apparently saw that the land too. is being used for the lamp sale. That is where we have gotten to. So I don't think that we've been serious about it. And if, if indeed we have lost, because where we are, if we were fighting it, then we've lost the battle. And we need to admit that we've lost it. So then we see what steps can be taken. But if we say we are fighting, every day we are fighting, mm. and the thing is getting worse by the day, then where is the evidence of the fight? Uh, Suleiman Abraima says we should admit we've lost the battle. He calls all that is happening gimmicks, and he says uh, there is public deceit going on. Let me wrap with this final story. ECOWAS AU condemned coup d'etat in Burkina Faso, and the Economic Community of West African States and the African Union have condemned the current military takeover in Burkina Faso, describing it as a setback to the restoration of constitutional rule. The two organizations have also asked uh, the military junta to refrain from acts of violence and comply with laid down processes agreed with transitional authorities to return the country to constitutional order by July the 1st, 2024. This was contained in a separate 
uh, statement or in separate statements issued by ECOWAS Chairman Guinea-Bissau's President Umaro Sissoko Mbalo and AU Commission Chairperson Musa Faki Maham at the weekend. In the country's second coup in a year, Burkina Faso military leader Paul Henri Damiba was on Friday deposed as Army Captain Ibrahim Traore took charge dissolving the transitional government and suspending the constitution. Uh, so we've seen back-to-back -back coups in the sub-region. Very worrying development. We've also heard our own ECOWAS uh, chair, Nanado Danko Ekofuado, speak to those issues. But it appears the turmoil is not going anywhere anytime soon. Quick reactions, Sule? Well, it's a very, another troubling situation in our region. Mm. Um, further evidence of the democratic recession that we are witnessing um, in, in Africa generally. Mm. Of course, it wasn't, it, or it isn't the case that there was a, a civilian leader there. So it's a military person taking over from, you know, another coup regime. What they would call uh, a palace coup. Yes. So uh, one would say that, well, we haven't moved. We are still where we are. But I think that our, our regional and continental uh, leaders need to really act in ways that uh, clearly support mm -hmm. the position of the ordinary people. Mm. Now, number one, we all know what is happening in the Sahel region. You know, right now, as we speak, almost 50% of Burkina Faso is under the command and control of these rebel groups or the terrorists. About 50% of the country is gone. Now, of course, I know behind the scenes work is going on, diplomatic engagement, security engagement, peacekeeping missions, and all of that. But people would want to see much more robust intervention from our region. For example, why hasn't there been uh, a joint ECOWAS, you know, um, uh, peacekeeping uh, mission or attempts to combat whatever is happening in the Sahel region? Why, has, how, why haven't we pulled our troops together, our resources together to intervene? At what point would we do that? So that, for me, is one area that we are not doing well. The second is um, what is happening in some of these countries. For example, if you take Guinea, which is under sanctions now from ECOWAS, ECOWAS looked on when Afa Conde was changing the constitution, as a result of which people who needed to defend the dem democratic uh, uh, regime there decided to do what we expect all citizens to do, rise up and defend your constitution and defend your democracy. In the process of doing that, more than 100 people were killed by Afa Conde's regime. ECOWAS was looking on. Eventually, when the constitution was changed and then Afa Conde won that you know, election, he was inaugurated. Our president, the then ECOWAS, ECOWAS chairman, was there to bless it. Uh, President Ouattara of Cote d'Ivoire has done it. When he won the election, people died in an attempt to defend the Constitution to ensure that this third term agenda did not work. People died. ECOWAS looked on. When he won the election, our president as ECOWAS chairman was there to bless it. Mm. Togo, the man has been there all right. these years as if it's a monarchical state. Mm. I'm told, I was reading this morning that... We moved the from Yassinbe and now his son, for, for yes. Eyadema, Eyadema, is also... Yes, uh, for Eyadema. He is there. ECOWAS is looking on. He will change the constitution and continue to be on. So sometimes it then provides a justification for the military to say, if you say you want democracy, this is not democracy. Right. A coup d'etat against the constitution is a coup d'etat. Like uh, uh, Afakonde did like right. Watara did, mm. like the uh, Foreign Assembly has done. So why do we look on until when the military then intervenes, they'll go under sanctions. And the sad thing is that if you look at Guinea, people died in the attempt to rise to defend the constitution. They got no support. After the person who abused the constitution got onto power, ECOWAS endorsed him. Then after that, 
The military intervenes. ECOWA says we have imposed sanctions. The sanctions does not affect Afa Kondi. The sanctions affect the same people who suffered to try to defend the constitution and failed. Now they are the ones enduring the suffering under ECOWA sanction. So if we look at it this way, I think our leaders have a lot to do. Democracy must be working for the people. Democracy shouldn't be seen to be working for individual leaders. But right now, it appears that is what it is, that our leaders get onto power and they do all they want with our resources, with our money. People are suffering. And then that then motivates the military to do what they shouldn't do, which is to take over power mm. you know, in a way that is unconstitutional. We should all condemn these acts and, and work towards building and consolidating our democracy. Mm. Thank you so much for those reflections. Uh, just a quick one. Ghana's party shows great form for club. Of course, he uh, left the Ghana camp uh, when we were playing with, I believe it was Brazil, and uh, he had an injury, but he was in fine form for Arsenal, netting that brilliant uh, goal. They beat uh, Tottenham Spurs uh, by three goals to one. Of course, we'll bring you more news on that. Liverpool drew with Brighton. They shared three goals apiece. Fulham lost uh, one to four to Newcastle. Uh, and uh, Chelsea just pipped, you know, got a shade ahead of Crystal Palace. And my own Manchester United lost by Mapito. Guess what? Six goals to three or three goals to six. Look, um, Manchester City is on fire now. Between them and Arsenal, it's a pretty dicey game. But I know my man United will pick up form. What I don't know, and later on the show you can share with me your thoughts, mm -hmm. whether Haaland, Erling Haaland, can continue this form. He is in fine form. He is strong. But like with Fernando Torres in Liverpool back then, one injury and it could be a sad situation. But I wish him well. I mean, he's playing in a... Uh, the, the citizens, the very team that opposes us in Manchester. But you can only wish him well. He's doing very well. Yeah. Let's get into other stories. The big story there, Asantehene alarmed and he bemoans the rate of deforestation. Now, the Asantehene Otto Fosse Tutu II has described as alarming the current rate of deforestation in the country. Estimated at 10 million hectares per year, he said available statistics indicated that Ghana had one of the highest uh, deforestation rates in Africa and the world at 2% per annum on the average, losing about 135,000 hectares of forest per year uh, as of 2020. And we also have ECG vending system improves, but many still can't access power. Let's take a look at that story. So some electricity consumers are still complaining of difficulties in buying prepaid power credits in spite of assurances by the electricity company of Ghana ECG that the system has been restored. The ECG said last Saturday that its, prepared customer, it's, that its prepaid customers could now purchase power at third-party vending points and through the use of the mobile phone through its app. That it said followed resolution of challenges that resulted in difficulties in purchasing power. Customers can now purchase electricity credits from their nearest vending points and all ECG district offices. That's according to the ECG statement. We also have prayer camps not solution to breast cancer and that's according to the head of the um, Breast Cancer Awareness Association. Uh, but, Mr. Brahma, any thoughts on Asantini being alarmed and bemoaning the rates of deforestation and also the ECG vending system improving, but many still can't access power? I have tried since yesterday to, to uh, buy ECG um, credit. Uh, through the ECG app, which I have always used. And I was trying yesterday because I read that from October 1, it was going to work. Um, unfortunately, it didn't. This morning, I've tried again. Uh, it didn't. I, I think my only luck is that uh, I haven't completely run out of power. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just, I was just trying to do that out of precaution because uh, I don't get updates on... What I, what I still have or my balance, mm. which is something that I ordinarily would have had. So out of precaution, uh, to just try and top up, just in case, you know, um, the power goes up at some point. But since yesterday, I've not been um, lucky with that. I can only hope that, well, it may be isolated incident with me, but otherwise the system has been restored. 
But it also speaks to the whole question about our digitization process and the need to realize that, look, it's technology and anything can happen. Mm. You know, even, even in the U.S., the advanced societies where technological advancement started, there they are occasionally these issues. So, yes, it's understandable, but it should also get us to reflect in the way and manner we are going about with our digitization process, where it appears now that almost everything is being centralized. <coughs> and if one day there is a problem, then we would be in a big, big, big trouble. I can only hope that ECG will be able to um, sort out the issue so that people can have uh, access to um, the service. But I think with Tunfo's um, point, it's something that we continue to lament on. I believe that in the area of preserving our, the future of this country, uh, the government certainly has failed in the fight against Galante. There's no doubt about that. Because what is happening cannot be termed as a success. I mean, absolutely, there's a failure. Travel across the country and you see the water bodies, the state of our water bodies. Forest reserves are being totally you know, destroyed by Galante activities. Um, other areas are completely being destroyed. And certainly, this cannot be an evidence of a successful fight against Galante. It is a complete failure. And so uh, it is either the president act by ensuring that heavy, you know, either sanctioning those that he's put in charge at the various regions and districts, or he himself then maybe say, well, I put my presidency on the line in the, for the fight against Galante. I acknowledge that things have not gone the way they should go, and therefore um, I'm, I'm, I'm taking the right decision by, if it is handing over or quitting the job, um, I think we need to be serious as a country because this is our future. This is the future of Ghana that is completely being destroyed. And we can't keep talking about, oh, one day we'll import water. One day we'll import water. And then we keep going like that. Till when would we um, act? It's a total failure. And we must say it as such and stop this whole thing about, oh, Galamse fight. We are going to fight Galamse robustly. How many times should we hear that? So Otufo is right in being quite um, <laughs> speaking out of desperation, speaking out of frustration. Uh, if I were him, uh, I think my, my situation would be the same. Mm. We can't blame chiefs. We can't blame, you know, that is why the laws are there. That is why the police is there. That is why the judiciary is there, to prosecute offenders. Right. So if people are not being prosecuted, how do we keep complaining? Uh, and, and Mapito, uh, just a quick thought on, on the ECG scenario. We've heard, you know, bits about how supposedly the glitch may have been a hack mm -hmm. and all of that, and how it could have been internal. I mean, there have been allegations thrown around about a cabal that could be in, involved in all of this, siphoning money. I feel whatever it is, we cannot confirm. All we want is that it should be dealt with yeah. so that ordinary folk don't have to go through the, the pain. Because I was mentioning the other day, look, there are people who operate coal stores, uh, major businesses. Mm -hmm. If they don't have generators, for example, and this happens, how do you expect them to power their facilities? Even if they have to do so, it would mean immediate um, cost that they, they, they weren't prepared for. And looking at the economic situation, this wouldn't help anybody. And a quick one on the breast cancer bit. I, I think I'll just, you know, it talks about how people should, yes, uh, go to hospital when you suspect anything of the sort and going for, instead of going to pastors to pray for you. I think just balance it. It's like that Arab proverb, trust in God, but tie your camel. So go and let them pray for you and everything, but go to a hospital facility, get yourself checked, take the, the required medication, undergo chemotherapy, whatever it is. If, if surgery is needed, do that. And don't just say, oh, we're going to pray over it. God knows, and he gave us science. He gave us doctors. So don't die an unnecessary death. I just wanted to reiterate that. Sometimes some people feel if you do this, it means you don't believe in God. You know, when you go to hospital and all of that, it doesn't mean that. Other stories? Uh, no, no. Oh, no, other stories. Let's go to the Daily Guide. Let's quickly do so. We're building thriving tourism economy. Akufuado says so. That story on page three of the Daily Guide newspaper. And in fact... Uh, the president has stated that the government wants to use tourism as, as an effective tool for economic transformation mm -hmm. in a move to create jobs and prosperity for Ghanaians. He disclosed that the government intended to use the next 18 months to exploit the country's culture, heritage, history, as well as the hospitality and beautiful national scenery 
natural scenery to attract tourists, fun lovers, and leisure seekers who are hoping to find a unique experience in Africa. Of course, there's been talk about the Global Citizens uh, Show, yeah. the festival, which was also facilitated by uh, government. And we've had the year of return, uh, the year beyond the year of return. We've also had that situation where there's been talk about creating an institution, you know, for to train people in tourism. Mm -hmm. uh, so you would say, well, quite a bit of commitment. Um, are we seeing that on the ground? You, Suleymana. Certainly tourism is a, a major area to focus on uh, mm -hmm. for our development. Other countries are doing it and certainly we can also do it. So it is quite um, um, heartwarming to hear the president talk about the fact that it's an area that is going to be prioritized. Um, but again, it, it brings us back to the whole issue. How can you be talking about promoting tourism when your environment is being destroyed? Mm -hmm. Tourism, to a large extent, is really about the environment. Mm. <laughs> I, I don't think that people who leave Europe or the Americas just to come and um, look at how beautiful your hotels are. They have far more superior hotels there. I don't yeah. think they would want to come here to look at your infrastructure, your roads, or your buildings, because they have far more um, superior roads and buildings over there. If they would come here, it's predominantly about our coastline, our environment, our game reserves, of course our people, and how right. clean our environment is. And so, um, yeah, it's a, it's, it's, it cannot be that we want to promote tourism at a time when our environment is being destroyed. And so if indeed there is that commitment to promote tourism, there must be a commensurate you know, uh, commitment to promoting our environment. And that, for me, is the beginning. We need the prerequisite for promoting tourism is a great environment. And so we would look forward to uh, more actions, more realistic commitment to promoting our environment, because that's the only way we can eventually promote tourism. Let's wrap with uh, these stories. So a few more headlines. GRA rolls out EVAT invoice. There is, we killed four Say Mankasim killers. I'm sure you followed that story uh, where uh, a pastor and a chief uh, took away the life of a 22-year-old. It's um, emerged now that they have actually killed four people. And, and this was just the, the latest one that we got wind of. And thank <coughs> thankfully, they've been nabbed. Baumia extols Adokufo. I'm talking about the vice president uh, extolling the former defense minister. Of course, he is now the chancellor of the Kumasi Technical University. And there's also don't reject our cocoa coffee upon Kruba says. So I saw a tweet on this. Uh, over the weekend. So let me just get into that. Minister for Information, Kodjo Pongkroma, has called on the European Union to work with African, Caribbean, and Pacific countries to prevent its proposed ethical and sustainable supply chain rules from becoming a burden for the local cocoa and coffee industry. According to Mr. Pongkroma, though the new legislation is a way to drive better practices within the cocoa and coffee subsector, more importantly, the EU must work with ACP countries in achieving these sustainability standards. Else, it risks putting players within the value chain out of business. He quotes here, at a time where farmlands are coming under threat for competing and more rewarding economic activities, sustainability is a matter that requires more attention. By no means, however, should sustainability be used as a pretext to limit market accessibility. Exchange of best practices and technical assistance is necessary so that we can have a win-win situation in all of this. Part of the problem, as some people have pointed out, has to do, again, with Galamse and what it is doing to our water bodies, which we'll use for farming, what it's doing to the land itself in terms of mercury and other contamination in there. And people are saying this is even watering down the quality of Ghana's cocoa, which we are known for worldwide, and that it could be part of the problem in terms of the quality we put on the international market. Your take? Well, uh... I, I read a tweet um, of the minister as well and some pictures posted from some engagement. In Suleiman, your, your voice is a bit muffled right now. Can you hear me? Better. Okay, so I was making the point that I, I read the tweet and I saw uh, pictures of the minister's engagement uh, in Brussels. In fact, 
I I I spotted him uh, at the Brussels airport uh, last Wednesday, and I was asking myself, oh, what what could be happening here in relation to media staff and press freedom staff and so on and so forth. But we couldn't get to, to speak because he was quite a distance um, away from me. Uh, but later when I saw that, I said, oh, okay, our Minister for Information is getting onto something related to trade business and all of that. And uh, I've, always, I've always had some, uh, I don't know what, how to put it, but some uh, sort of feelings that maybe one day our our fantastic minister for information will end up being uh, our trade minister. So it's great to, to have Kojo uh, beginning to talk matters of trade and all of that. But like you said, it still comes down to the environment, and uh, it's a question of ethical production of these um, produce. Uh, I don't think it's a, a question of they saying that we would at some point not need cocoa or coffee from these countries about how ethical we are producing these things, issues of child labor, issues of the environment and all of that. So I believe we should up our game, again, on the environment to ensure that uh, we are in compliance with these measures that have been adopted to ensure that the right things are done the right way. Let's get into some more stories. Okie doke. There's also the Daily Statesman, Yana Lords Baumia for Religious Harmony Drive. Then there is President Okufuado on his pledge to Haruna Eseku. That story on page three. Opankrumah makes case for Ghana's cocoa and coffee industry, like we have just mentioned. <coughs> then tourism for economic transformation. $10 million hospital, hospitality training school in the offing, like I mentioned a short while ago. Um, we have just about a minute, Suleimana. I would like you to wrap on two issues. SIM card re-registration. Uh, we've been told that, uh, I mean, people have not had their lines blocked and all of that yet, but we've been told it's only a matter of time. When? We don't know. Your quick take on that. And maybe on Katie Hammond's uh, thinking that young bearded people uh, who may have been booing at the president are coconut heads, and we practically know nothing about administering this country. Quick reflections on these two matters, and it's a wrap. Well, you see, there, there, there are some people that I, li I love to listen to um, because I, I, get, I get entertained quite often when I listen to them. I, I, I end up laughing. And increasingly, Mr. Katie, Honorable Katie Hammond is becoming uh, one of them. So that is my comment on it. When I listen to him, I, I, I had a good laugh. Um, so that is what I would say about that. Uh, on the SIM card registration, we knew it was not going to work. Uh, but the minister as usual, in a dictatorial way, wanted to say, look, I would do it, you know. Um, I'm looking forward to what he will say now, what she will say now, uh, whether this time around she's again going to reluctantly um, extend the, the deadline. But certainly you can't block people's uh, SIM card when it is not their fault, when they haven't right. had their Ghana card, when you have made Ghana card mandatory for registration. And I don't have it, out of no fault of mine. How do you then punish me for something that is not my fault? So, I mean, we should, we should not act as if without the SIM card, everybody having their SIM registered and linked to the Ghana card, Ghana is going to end by December. The most important things are there. We should deal with those ones rather than these easy-to-do uh, ways of punishing ordinary Ghanaian citizens who are already suffering uh, uh, under under our current economic um, challenges. So let us continue to judge or let us continue to dialogue. We want to have the best for our country. It is good that people register for all, all you know, the things that one can think about. But it must be done in a humane manner. It must be done in a way that indicates that we are not in, a, in an autocratic regime, as the minister sometimes um, wants us to feel. Mm. So, uh, yes, people should pursue the Agana card, so that at the end of the day, they'll be able to register. Uh, but, but then, just, just 30 seconds. Sorry, I... I this, you know, the, some people have filed a court case uh, against the NCA and the ministry over this SIM card registration. And I think last week I read that they had gone to withdraw their case, and they withdrew it on the basis that GAN, uh, the NIA had indicated that, look, these people had actually applied for the card, and their cards are ready. Some of them have not collected it, and so they withdrew. But what amazed me was the fact that it was an application from the NI NCA to the NIA for the data around the applicant. And then 
ultimately, you could then have the data of these people released and actually published in the media, mm. including their date of birth, you know, um, their surname, their last names, and, and all that. And then I asked myself, is that how our data is going to be treated? So that the NCA lawyer can simply write to the NIA and say, oh, I need the data of Ben and uh, his colleagues, you know, Suleimana, and, this, and then it is provided. I don't think that we are safe if this okay. is how our data is going to be treated. Okay. And we need to engage the NIA on that. All right. Suleimana, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Always thank refreshing, and we wish you the best of the week. Have a great week. Mapito? It's been fab. It's been awesome. But I'll be out and about in Kanishi mm -hmm. uh, shortly. And we'll be having that very um, crucial interaction. Can't wait for that. More coming, but up next, we serve you sports. Do stay.